You said, I've been inside the heart 15,000 times and I've never scooped sugar out of a blocked artery. I scoop cholesterol out of blocked arteries. Please explain that. There's been a debate, food wars. They're popular, they're on TV. I participated in way too many of them. Um, but food wars aren't new. Uh, and at least they go back for sure to the 1960s when there was a debate about the cause of atherosclerosis. Was it predominantly foods rich in saturated fats? That would be Ansel Keys' position, later the American Heart Association position, and now almost every major medical society's position if they have a voice on the topic. Or was atherosclerosis largely caused by excess sugar in the diet? And this has recycled from the 60s and 70s to the current day because of the uh, obsession with low-carb diets if you eliminate sugar from the diet, you're protecting your heart. In reality, this food war of the 1960s and 1970s is often characterized as Dr. Ansel Keys versus a physician in England, John Yudkin, who wrote a book about sugar and heart disease. Um, you know, the constitution of plaque and my involvement as a interventional cardiologist, having been inside arteries, there is a device that lets you take the plaque out, examine it, send it to pathology. There is no sugar crystals that are in your arteries that are causing blockage. There are cholesterol crystals that are in your arteries that can trigger a heart attack and cause blockage. There's no doubt about that. So there's no sugar in your arteries. Is sugar a healthy food in excess? Added sugar particularly, not fruit, but we're talking added sugar in cookies, cakes, uh, baked goods, uh, sugar sweetened beverages? No, it's absolutely not. And with the rise in weight and obesity in the Western world, uh, which is due at least in part due to excess sugar calories and sugar sweetened beverages and baked goods and such. Um, sugar is a cause of heart disease indirectly. Sugar is excess calories, is weight gain, is insulin resistance, is type 2 diabetes, is triglyceride elevations, maybe blood pressure elevations, uh, sedentary lifestyle, and you develop atherosclerosis. So a public policy goal is to teach people to limit added sugar. Drink water, not sugar sweetened beverages, uh, have an apple, not a donut. These are important messages that don't relate necessarily completely to saturated fat conversation. Sugar matters without a doubt in the diet that many Americans eat in 2020 and in the Western world. But does sugar directly, do you have any animal model, you give excess sugar and with a short time they develop atherosclerosis? No. Do we have animal models, you give excess foods rich in saturated fat and cholesterol, and they develop atherosclerosis. We absolutely do. We've had that for about 90 plus years. So the debate doesn't need to really be uh, discussed anymore. Both matter, but one directly causes the disease. In chapter seven of the plant-based solution, what did you mean by grow plants, not cancer cells? Yeah. Um, the plant-based solution is uh, the fifth book uh, that I published. And it was an overview of predominantly the relationship between diet and cardiovascular disease, but we did uh, get to other organ systems and conditions like cancer. Uh, and grow plants, not cancer, is uh, an area we still need lots more science. But the general feeling from epidemiology studies, basic biochemistry, centenarian studies, the richer your diet is in brightly colored whole plant foods and the lower your diet or absence of animal foods, uh, the lower is your risk of cancer. We have the processed red meat colon cancer causation data from the World Health Organization. We have databases that suggest that plant diets, observations like Japan where plant diets were very common and low cancer risk uh, have been observed. We have direct data from Dr. Dean Ornish on prostate cancer and putting men on plant diets versus standard diets and seeing a reduction in the size and uh, the markers of prostate cancer. Um, but we're not at a point where we can say, you have a bowl of salad, you'll never get cancer. You know, there's genetic factors, very strong environmental factors from contaminants, pollution and such. Um, I advise my patients, even if they're on a very uh, observant plant diet to still have breast imaging, colonoscopy or Cologuard, prostate examinations and blood tests, it's not a guarantee. It's just uh, increasing the odds you'll live a life free of cancer. In the 1950s, why were there 10 times more people in Loma Linda, California, who lived to over 100 than there were in Los Angeles? 
Yeah, the, the really important observation in the 1950s that Loma Linda was this interesting pocket of longevity with people living 10 years longer than the average Californian, you know, it triggered uh, funding from the government called the Adventist Health Study because it wasn't apparent completely why. I mean, it was certainly observed that there was a large pocket of Seventh-day Adventists and a faith-based recommendation that they limit animal products, they have some fitness, they avoid smoking and alcohol. But the research group really dug in and they got access to about 25,000 residents of Loma Linda. A second phase of the study got access to about 92,000 residents of Loma Linda. They got blood work, they got dietary histories, they got lifestyle factors, and they repeated them over time and they followed these people up. So there are hundreds of publications that now have come out of Loma Linda. And there's a variety of factors. They don't smoke as much as the rest of the American public. So that's obviously great. They have a little bit more average fitness than the average American public. That's great. They on average eat more plant foods than the average American public. That's great. And one of the things often attributed to their culture and diet is they eat significantly more nuts and seeds than the average American. And there seems to be pretty good data. Again, it's always if you're going to eat pork rinds and you're reaching for a bowl of raw walnuts, there's no doubt you've upgraded your snack. You still you know, need to watch the calories and uh, ask how much of that bowl of walnuts you're eating. But um, you know, it's an upgrade. Um, whether there's directly fiber and minerals and anti-cancer factors in nuts and seeds uh, isn't completely clear. But they are whole foods and they are good choices compared to so many of the others. So uh, the Adventist Health Studies have... Uh, provided a foundation that's really consistent. That's the most important thing. It's consistent with other data. It supports what's been done at the Harvard School of Public Health and their large databases, uh, studies of Okinawan diet and their results on health and longevity. So it's that beautiful consistency that allows us to say we know what the healthiest food plate looks like. And that's been published by the Harvard School of Public Health in 2011. It's a good example.